And good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on where you are tuned in from. Welcome to another episode of What Now? It's another wonderful day with another wonderful guest. Um, yeah, still in a pandemic, still going, still motivating, and still inspiring. I uh, hope everyone is doing well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, it's I didn't have a, a guest last Monday, but I still got a bunch of guests lined up. Thankfully, I'm appreciative of everybody tuning in. I hope you still get um, inspiration and motivation from me. What's up, Daryl? Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you. Everybody else, Hamza. Um, who else in here? Amand, April. Whoever is tuning in and is up for another doses of motivation and inspiration. How are you guys doing? Everybody feeling okay? I'm a little tired, you can tell. But, you know, makeup and good lighting does wonders. Um, hopefully my guest will be here in any second. Um, my guest today is Kenny Conglomerate, as you can see. Um, great guy I got to know over the past few weeks. Uh, has an interesting story to tell. Uh, is doing a lot. Very creative. And uh, yeah, I can't wait for, uh, for him to join so we can uh, chop it up a little bit and see what he can inspire us with. Uh, what's up, P? I see you. Avery, I see you. Um, thank you, Avery. There goes my guest. Well, if you have any questions for him, uh, please make sure you put them in the question box so I can get to them later in the conversation. What's up, Pinky? Appreciate you uh, tuning in. Oh, Brandon, what's up? I haven't talked to you in a minute. Oh, I love it when I see my peoples in here. I appreciate all of you. Uh, oh my gosh, Moody in here. What's going on? All right, let me get my guest in here. Um, let me see. Let me see, let me see if we can get him in here. Kenny Conglomerate. Lady. Oh, Jimmy in here too. What's up, Mr. Jenkins? Oh, I see you, uh, Sonia. Thank you. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, we're going to chop it up with um, Kenny. Oh, thanks, P. You're, so, you're a sweet P. All right. <clears throat> Getting ready. Y'all see my little gear today? My idea is Star Wars. It ain't May 4th yet, but I felt like let's. Let's get it popping today. All right, let's hope his connection is okay. Let's hope his connection is okay. Because, come on, Ken. What's up with your Wi-Fi? Let's not do this to me again, please. Not today, not today. There we go. Hey, what's going on, Pat? <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I am excellent. Thank you. I was hoping that Instagram wasn't going to give me a hard time, and it didn't. Thank you. I appreciate you coming in and your Wi-Fi being on point. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And congratulations, too. You made a year, and you've been putting yes. together some really tough interviews I've been watching, and it's very inspiring. Thank you so much. And and you know what? It has been a year, and you are talk number 90. I'm coming up 100. Okay. So. Stay tuned for that one. I don't know what I'm going to do for that one, but it, it'll be a special one. Um, Kenny, thank you so much for being a guest. And, and we're hoping that you, well, we know that you can inspire us with your journey because you've, 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 you've had a long way, you know. Um, yeah. you, you've done a lot. Uh, but I want to start off with asking you, what, how has this pandemic been for you? As everybody knows, um, this, this talk started uh, to be motivating and inspiring for creative people during the pandemic. Pandemic's still here upon us, even though y'all might be playing outside. We are still inside. So, Mr. Kenny, how has it been for you? What have the effects been uh, professionally and personally? Well, um, the pandemic, uh, it really didn't affect me much. Um, well, that's good to of hear. The, of the, the type of work. Well, not, not in the sense of, uh, you know, um, my career. I'll right. say it like that. But as far as uh, with family and, and friends, of course, everyone has been affected. Um, everyone knows someone that, you know, probably uh, been sick, uh, yeah. probably <laughs> passed and things like that. And my condolences to everyone's family um, in reference to that. But as far as um, creatively, um, a lot of the work that I do is, is usually, I'm usually in the lab and, yeah. and, and, you know, doing my thing on the computer anyway. So I was already ahead of the curve. Um, but I would say the pandemic, it uh it forced me to zone in on it just a little bit more on my actual craft and uh, you know uh, get some self reflection. Right, right. That's good. Um, so how did that translate in your in your craft now? What what exactly? Can you pinpoint a specific thing that you 
that you narrow well mastered or changed in your craft um well one thing that i do now um a lot of where my inspiration comes from um of course you can find inspiration from outside and i've always done that throughout my career but i've been meditating a little bit more That's and true. when things come to me naturally and, and it's, it's it's more of a spiritual you know kind of a direction that is pushing me in and I always just flow with it. Right. And that's how I've been moving throughout the pandemic. That's good. So how has it been, you know, you said professionally you weren't really affected. I've I've talked to a lot of producers who kind of said the same thing. They're in the lab. They're not really dealing with all kinds of uh, impact like that. Um, Have you seen that around you in your craft, in your industry that people have been affected? What has been the biggest impact i mean i understand that people's um income has like you know slowed down and did that have any type of impact on you you know people hiring you for projects or you know projects being on hold because of this thing well it actually picked up a bit (laughs) which is um, digital world yeah yeah it's actually odd but it, it picked up um and what what it did for me it um it actually showed me that i was providing people with more value. Um, And I'll explain to you how. Um, A lot of people that had loved ones that may have passed even prior to the pandemic, you know, I was already doing pieces and being commissioned for things like that. And, you know, when, you know, unfortunately, with, you know, passings and funerals and different things like that, or just memorabilia, I've been commissioned to do things like that. And for me, it, it was an it was an honor to to take on that responsibility. It's it's actually it can be a bit draining at times because you know you want to make sure that you are, do the right job. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And um, but at the same time, you know, it, it comes with the territory. So it picked up actually for me, and then, um, that's what helped me to zone in and and really focus on my craft yeah. and what I actually did. And take do you it feel seriously. like? Do you feel like you've mastered more of your skills in design? Have you picked up new ways of, you know, applying, you know, how you make your designs? Like, I know there's there's new stuff coming out every day in every industry, especially digitally. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, when I actually started this, I was around a, a, a gentleman by the name of BK, the artist. He's actually a painter did a couple of shows with him and, you know, we put some things together for him. At this time, I didn't even touch the computer. <laughs> to, to be very honest, you wouldn't even believe it. I was actually a little bit scared of the computer. I was illiterate, computer illiterate. Wow. I would stay away from the computer. Emails, everything. That wasn't my thing. I'm old school. You old, you know I, was I, mean? gonna, I was about to say, you old school. <laughs> I'm old school. You on the so, streets, not behind exactly, the computer. Exactly, exactly. But my thing was, you know, when I had these creative ideas, I always had the mind for it. I would have to actually outsource work or find the artist to try to pull my vision together. And a lot of times, you know, they would pull it together, but not exactly the way I see it. But as long as they could come somewhat close, I would always have to do that. I would hire artists. I would hire videographers. I would just go from A to Z. And there was another gentleman by the name of Cedric Durant. That's another one of my brothers. He was a graphic designer. So we all came together and I was always fascinated by the both of these Mm -hmm. guys. And, you know, pretty much I incorporated both of those skills. You know, you get frustrated over time and you want to do things yourself and get hands on. Right. And I developed, you know, what I am today. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just crazy to me, you know, how fast people like kind of latched on because when you have history from the past and being recognized for other things, it's hard for someone to forget that and say, well, this is who he is now. And well, this, the thing is also with people, they, they tend to put you in one box and you, you, there's no way you can be in another box when that's, I mean, we have multiple talents. Not everybody taps into all their talents, but and some people don't even know. And you actually found out you had another talent that you could put to use. And so that's, I mean, yeah, that's respectable. And so well, for know, people to understand that is sometimes crazy, but you know, we can be more than one thing. Absolutely. And you know, to, 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 when I think back, I kind of like reverted back to actually art. Right. It's, it's still out, in the same, it's still in the same realm. It is. Absolutely. You got it. You got yeah. it. 
you know and then um, because i don't want i want to get into that a little bit later um i want to follow the format a little bit absolutely um, i got you so so what are some of the things that you have changed in your designing like i want some solid examples if you have them um the past year just by being in this pandemic what are some of the things that you picked up um in your craft like i i know that i had um w who's a visual artist a painter and he started um um you know getting his skills up in in i think it was uh water paint or oil whatever it was water based water nice. paint but he was he was focusing on that so are there any things that you focused on specifically in this pandemic yes yes there is um basically what i've i've uh learned to do because you know, i do everything digitally yeah um i started really focusing on creating my backgrounds and oh. creating my backgrounds in the canvas you know it takes a lot of time especially when you're doing it digitally yes it makes all of the difference in the actual piece because you got a geometry within looking at a piece of art a lot of people don't understand that and oh. i thought that i had to go to school for that you know i was self-taught but i actually went to school because i needed to know the found the foundation, the fundamental right. aspects of actually doing art. And in art, there's usually like a, a, a geometrical, like a, a figure eight in a lot of pieces that will draw someone's attention to the piece as they're looking at it, and especially with advertisements. So those are the things that I studied and I started to really pay more attention to that. Right. In order to grab people and, you know, make them feel what I'm, what I'm putting out there. Well, when you talk about background, it kind of makes sense to me because even when you take a picture, the background makes a difference. Like if you take a picture, whether there's like a blue sky or a gray sky, it makes a difference in the picture. Whether there's a building or a tree, it makes a it makes a different difference. So, um, all right, well, going back a little bit more into the pandemic effects, um, have anything has anything changed for you health wise? physically or mentally did you change your routines or you know did you feel like you had to tap into you know your health in a different way did you change your diets yes 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 all of the above so what right okay here, how, how my... about physically yes oh yeah, what's you that see, tea you see, this, you see this tea right here that i'm drinking yes no sugar just well that's i mean yeah the, okay I mean, that's I, a small I, I change but that's i should have been on that already but usually diabetic style i'm going all oh, the no, way in you very good, I mean? very good. So no no sugar with that. Um working out, of course. Uh, are you working out more now? I mean you uh -huh. you came from, from you were pretty fit. You mean you were dancer, so Yeah, but you know what? Over time I got a little Buddha belly going on right you now. You got older. <laughs> I got that Buddha belly on here right now. But I can still They call that rap. dad bot. <laughs> so yeah, so what have pandemic, you what have you done? Since the well, pandemic you started working out more? Well, I, I, I you know with the pandemic, of course, I had to shut down the gym, you know, not feeling safe, not going right, to right. the gym. So, you know, doing more home-based workouts, uh, you know, more planking. Um, I'm not up to my Ooh. level that I, that, I, that I used to be at. I used to be able to do three minutes of planking. Um, now I'm barely making a full minute with it you know you, you know you Yo, it's, going to let it. me let me cut in uh, so me and my girl kim we we work out three days a week it's okay. my accountability buddy so we we get up early we get on facetime and we do our routine so and in our last set we got planking and uh yo every time we we have a record we're like super <laughs> happy and i think the the longest i've been playing and I, I didn't go to gym for six months either and then I, mm. we started this in uh, february my okay. longest was one minute 10 seconds. That's good. I was happy. I mean, I'm very weak. I'm a weak person. So that's good. <laughs> Talk about planking, man. That's funny. I'm glad that you said you barely make a minute because I felt like, Ugh. but yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so planking is one thing. Of course, you got your push ups, your diamonds, your wide, you work I can't all do that out. For shit. Like, oh my God. I, my it's arms are weak. Well, you know, the planking to actually help you build up to that because you I build know. Up your arms, your back, and everything. We have short. a full body workout that we do, but my arms are have always been a problem. I got my dumbbells and stuff, but okay. yeah. Yeah, I'm weak. My arms are weak. I got strong legs, though, so. Okay, well, <laughs> well for me, you would think that, you know, being that I've been a dancer, but I, I have chicken legs, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> two, two toothpicks or whatever. You know, I try to build it up, you know. Do but you got the moves, though. <laughs> do you still got the moves? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'll, I'll show you guys. I got some things that I'm working on. I, I'll show you a little bit. I mean, listen, I'm going to give it up 
to the to the Chris Browns and, right, and those right, cats right. right now. You know what I mean? They got it. You know what I mean? Okay, but so listen, we still we still move with it. So you gave up sugar in your tea. <clears throat> Did yes. you give up sugar in other situations? Uh, for for the most part. For the most okay. part, I'm getting it. Definitely sodas out of here for like over oh, okay. a year and a half. And then um, you're you're working out more, so that's good. Have you felt a change in in just your energy levels and stuff? Absolutely. When you work out, definitely, it helps me to be more creative. Helps me to oh, yeah. be more creative. If you clear your body, you clear your mind. So. Absolutely. Everything right. starts from the top down. You know. <laughs> well, <clears throat> with that said. I want to go back into your history because we're talking about your designs right now, but your designs are pretty much influenced um, by what you've done in life. You know, living living hip hop culture, being a dancer. Uh, I want to start with you know you see my lines. So let's let's pretend you don't know. I want to start with what was the point in your life, if there was any, where you were like, "Yo, I can do this dancing for a living." Or I can make this my, 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 you know, my thing. Well, as long as I can remember, you know, it's just been like a way of life, honestly. Um, I'm born in 1972. Hip-hop started in You came out your mom dancing? <laughs> um, almost. <laughs> <laughs> almost. But I, I owe a lot of it to my, my dance partner, my brother, my mentor, Sean Warren and Dawn. I mean, like, I was so fascinated by him. I, I was the youngest cat out here, um, just looking up to the to the older guys on the block. Like before I can even right. like go outside, like on my own, you know, this guy was like doing Michael Jackson and you know riding bikes. Everything was a competition back then. I mean, right, it be roller skating and right, you know, right. Everything was just like it was like bombing and Bailey Circus or something out there, Universal Soul Circus on my block. You know, where did you grow up? Say Where that? did you grow up? In, in Ozone Park, Ozone Park, Queens, Southside. Okay. Yeah, Southside, Queens. So we can all picture what that was like. Yeah. Yes. yes. All right. And so when, so you saw them outside and what, how did, how did you become part of that? Like you were trying to mimic them or? Well, Sean took me up under the wing. He always saw something in me. You know, he saw style in me. He always saw it in me. And I would watch and he would, you know, you know, teach me, you know, moves here and there. And he saw that I was able to pick up very quickly. I had a photogenic, uh, my memory was photogenic. So right. I was able to pick up moves. But what was very interesting about dancing with Sean is Sean is ambidextrous and he's a lefty. Oh. A lot wow. of dancers are righties. So when I learned to dance, when I made up moves, it would move like how a righty would actually dance. And when I did some of the moves that we did with him and choreographed, it would go the other way. So it was confusing to people. So we blew a lot of people's minds. Wow. And, you know, we were compared a lot, actually, to the Nicholas Brothers love of our time. You know, for wow. him, which that's was, like, awesome. uh, amazing. And that's one of our idols. That's great. So uh, roll it up back a little bit. Um, you said you have a photogenic memory, or you had? Well, I don't know if I have it so much now. <laughs> I was just checking because now I gotta mind my words because you're gonna remember everything. So <laughs> I was just checking. I, 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 was just I checking. had, you know what I mean. But I'm working on getting back there. You know. Okay, you like train in your you mind. Get, yeah, the older you get, the more that you gotta have going on. I have to now write things down. Right. Well, reminders. yeah. Then you, then you don't have a photogenic memory. You're good. We're good. <laughs> uh, okay. So Sean took you under his wing. Y'all became like somewhat of a, you know, a hot commodity at the time. Yes. Uh, but what was for you the defining point that you were like, oh, because, you know, especially dancing. I mean, no parent's going to be like, you're going to be dancing? What? If it ain't ballet or whatever, it, you know? It, so what, at what point did you, did you feel like, hey, I can make money with this. This can be my job. Was well, there? Like that time, I think, um, wow. <sighs> Think back. Well, I have to tell you that maybe two, maybe it's two things that stand out right now. If we go back as far as when people were popping, pop locking, and and doing everything, I was the little guy that they would spin around in the circle just to open it up before the guys get busy, right? And I was kind of nervous to go out there because all of the guys that danced around the way, they were older than me, and I looked up to a lot of these, you know, 
Right. Or some dancers from Southside Queens. You know, we had my boy Wayne out there getting busy. My boy Tron. You know, th these guys were like it. So right. I, I, I was busy. I did busy too. But I was nervous to do it in front of the, you know, everybody. But they would push me out there. Push me out. Come on, shorty. Come on, do your thing. Do your thing. Oh, and this crazy. one time I finally went out there and I gave it everything that I had. And the crowd was just loving me. That was my first defining moment to go, wow. How old were you? At that time, I might have been like 10. Oh, really? But well, I was dancing awesome. to that. I think I Sean is in like here. 10. Sean in here? I don't know. Um, I thought he was. I, I thought I saw him. Um, he I want to shout out Nate. And Stacy and everybody, I saw. I see you guys. I saw DJ E Money. All right, just wanted yeah, to salute, shout out. But I think Sean was. In the room. Yeah, shout out to Sean being in here. Um, but and yeah, so you're ten years old. Yeah. And then you're like, years. okay, I can do this. How do you make this your job? Because for the people that are tuned in that don't know Kenny, he's danced with the greatest of the greatest. So. Yeah. Oh, Uncle Mark, sorry, I didn't shout you out. Uh, but yeah, so you're 10 years old. You see the crowd going wild. You know, your, 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 um, uh, your idols are cheering you on. You know, the people that you look up to. How do you, what is the next step? Well, we just continue to go, honestly. Uh, we would rehearse for hours and hours and hours. Um, if it wasn't for, you know, Molly Mall, Mr. Magic, Mr. Rabbit, Rap Attack, you know, or Fly Tie being on the radio, they, they brought that raw hip-hop, you know, to the culture. Yeah. You know, those songs, those late-night pilot radio station shows staying there, and we would go hard. Yes. Go hard. Like, honestly, from the beginning to the end and going back and forth. So I was just perfecting the craft over and over and yeah, over and over again. So I, I, it was just, you know, natural. It was just natural for me. And I think the other moment was we were already making a name for ourselves at this point. But when it really, really hit me that this can be like it mm -hmm. was the first time actually meeting Cool G Rap. And it's a funny story. We met DJ Polo first. And this all came through DJ Mr. C. Salute okay. Mr. C. That's my guy right there. He put a lot of people on the map. He put us on the map. <laughs> Biggie, you know what I'm saying? Y'all already know the history on that. But, um, we had something in Queens that we would wait for every year when the summer came around. It was called Brooklyn Queens Day. So anybody from, you know, New York area or on this side of the, you know, the globe, that was the thing. So we I know it. There. I never experienced it, but I know it. Yeah. Brooklyn Queens Day was very special. I mean, everybody that's somebody's out there. Everybody's going out there to see all of the hottest artists at that time. Right. So we're out there and we get to the stage. So... We out there, we get to the stage, and Sean and I always dress the light. So that was our little theme that that we hooked up, you know, because as a dance duo, we wanted to be different. So we said, yo, let's dress alike. You know what I mean? A lot right. of times people would think that we were twins. We look nothing alike, but at the same time, <laughs> it's just the outfit. you know, dressing yeah. the same way, they was like, yo, those are those guys. So we kind of like was a little gimmick that we would work off of. And we always had the name TCF crew, just to let right. y'all know. We was TCF dancers. I don't want to jump ahead of the, you know, what you got going on. Right, right, right. But then we later on became TCF crew and everything right. else. And um, but you, you two started out as TCF. We was TCF exactly. Yeah. And Sean actually found that name when he was looking for a name for us. You know, he opened up the Bible, and he just went through the Bible, and this was a spiritual thing, and opened it up. And um, I think it's Matthew, Matthew twenty-two. Okay. Um, you know where. Jesus actually said in, in, in uh, one of his, uh, the parables at the end, you know, many are called, but, but few are chosen. Mm. And it was like, bing, that's us. TCF, the, the chosen, chosen few. few. Yeah. So we've been the <laughs> chosen few ever since. And I know, I know I regress, but I just needed to put that out there. But when we got to this stage, back to Brooklyn Queens Day, we get to the stage, you know, I see Ralph McDaniels over there. I see all of the greats. I'm like, yo. Ralph McDaniels in the house, yo, let's do up, yo, yo, we gotta do this, we gotta get to know these guys, let's, let's move us to our thing, so, you know, we got our game face on, boom, coming through, doing our thing, flat top, tight, <laughs> you know what I mean, that's how we did it, so we going through, we get to the stage, and we see Polo, now Polo, mm -hmm. we already knew him, Polo's like, yo, y'all wanna meet Coochie Rap? He was like, oh, of course, hell yeah, hell you know? yeah, can, can I, I can curse on, on, 
on the loud? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Let me let me loosen Free up. Free space. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, let's do this. So we met G. G was like, yo, what's up, yo? I heard a lot about you guys in the Queens area. You know, you guys been putting it down. Listen, um, I'm about to go on. Y'all want to go on? Y'all got a routine God. for my joint? We was like. Yeah, we got we to can make for everybody's shit. joint. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? We practice. We've been <laughs> dancing to your music, yeah. Word, exactly. You know what I'm saying? We've been going hard to all of that. Right. So we go on now. Now, this is the crazy part. Right before G went on, the crowd is going bananas. And I'm like, yo, what the hell's going on? Because now we on backstage. Rob Bass was on. Oh, Woo. shit. <laughs> Yo, you already know how Harlem was. Listen, Rob Bass, It Takes Two, that mm -hmm. was a banger. Boom, the crowd was going bananas. You know what I'm saying? You had his dance out there going crazy. Right. And then we went out. So I'm looking at G, looking at Sean. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got the face on like, oh, man. We got to we we go after this. this up. Yeah. But G had poison out. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, I know y'all probably know poison that, that BBD used to sample. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, shout out to Bev, my, my dude. <laughs> but we went out on stage and we performed Poison. Let me tell you something. We killed it. I'm sure and you it did. Was a moment. The crowd still went wild. <laughs> they went wild. But there was a moment where Sean did a solo. So Sean is out there. He rocking. He's doing a solo. Sean was nice, flexible, doing his thing. So now it comes my turn to come out. So I don't know if I caught the Holy Ghost or what. <laughs> I just went bananas, but at the, at the end of my routine, I just started jumping. Like this, I couldn't stop. Like I was just jumping up in the air. And when I looked out to the crowd, the whole crowd was jumping Stop with me. It. I was like, yo. <laughs> After that, that was the moment. I already knew this is it for me. Right. That's, that was my you know moment. What? And that being a defining, that's a dope ass defining moment because for you to come on, in that at that festival with that artist come on yeah. how many people get that as their moment as their defining moment that's insane that's that's exactly that's classic exactly like that's a moment where i feel like i'm happy there weren't any cell phones at the time but had there been there'd be footage of that shit everywhere yeah, and I honestly believe Ralph may have some footage. Yo, Ralph, I gotta holler at you. I know you're holding on to some footage, Ralph. We're gonna have to speak, Ralph. Ralph McDaniel, that's Uncle Ralph. Shout out. That would be that would be really dope just to see. I don't know if you've seen it back, but I I can imagine if that's a defining moment for you and somebody has captured it somewhere, even if it's crappy ass quality, that mm -hmm. would be really dope to have. I mean, that's that's his history. That's a, a, a memorable moment. Thank you, know you for what? sharing that with us. You know what? Um, I just thought about something. I, I, I don't know if you already said, but I know sometimes you would ask some of your guests, you know, is it something that you that you probably regret or whatever the case is? I, we get to that. We get to that. Oh, well, but right. you, no, but no, you no. can jump in. You can no, jump no, in. but it, it's not really a regret. You know, you okay, know go always, ahead. You know, you know, I'm always joking around when I'm on the club or whatever, but I just thought about something. You know, I don't want to forget it. You know, I'm getting a little old right now. Go ahead, go ahead. Your, your photogenic <laughs> memory ain't there, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Listen, I just wanted to basically say, like, no, you done threw me your pay with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What I, wanted, what I basically wanted to say was that, you know, what, I, not that I regret, but something that if I could turn back the hands of time, I actually wish I was in the crowd watching me perform. Because you can't. I know. But so even moment. if you could go back in time, you can't because then you won't be well, on the stage. <laughs> well, you know. It, yeah, it's not I, a regret I, moment. I, I understand what you, you're saying. You, well, if you, you want to see yourself. It depends, but you, you understand what I mean. If, if I could do that, I would love to see it because seeing it from my eyes out to the crowd and you see yeah. some people going crazy, I would have loved to have experienced what they were experiencing because you, when you hear it, yeah, 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 it, it, it's hard to actually, you know, to take it understand in the same it. way. It took That's me a long time to understand that I was, you know, giving that to the people right? because it's that just energy. you it's what you do. And that's why I said, if ha had there been like cell phones at the time, you would have been able to see how it was from the crowd. I mean, obviously there were no cell phones at the at the time, but um, 
but that would have been great for you to have that footage. Um, exactly. I want to shout out Kyle. I saw you in here. Thank you so much for tuning in, uh, and everybody else, of course. Um, yeah. So that's yeah. That's not a reg regrettable moment, but I think every artist who's ever been on stage giving that energy and getting that energy would love to see how it is to see it from that point of view you know yeah. and that's why a lot of artists actually have people that don't film from the stage but film from the crowd bingo and behind usually behind a crowd so that you can still see the crowd yeah. i mean that's that's what a lot of artists that i've you know seen do because they want to see that energy and that's also why a lot of people jump in the crowd just to be around that energy yes 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 so okay you performed with cool g rap at that time um what was the response after the show like how did people how did he take you guys on or was that a one-time thing no it was like no, let's do this all the time now come on tour no this that's definitely we did everything with cool g rap actually we we are part of that fabric of cool g rap you know uh, the building blocks nice. of the original uh i guess dancers that were you know, showcased on right. TV because there was a lot of dancers out there. And salute to every dancer, you know, that that's on this live or that'll be checking this out later. Everybody that contributed to hip hop. I love all of you guys because, you know, that's what makes me who right. I am. Right. Um, but at that time, we had Heavy D and the Boys. You know what I mean? Uh, rest in peace, Trouble T. Roy. Um, we, had, uh, we had Hot Dog. You know what I'm saying? Um, we had a Leg One, Leg Two. We had right. big lads out there doing things. Just scoop and scrap. You know what I mean? The list goes on. The list Are goes you, on. do you feel like you were, okay, is it safe to say that you were definitely uh, part of the, the foundation of dancers in hip hop shows? Yes. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. something to be proud of. I mean, we Absolutely. talk about the godfathers of hip hop. We talk about, you know, the founders of hip hop. But people forget that there's layers to it and there's different elements to it. And I'm not just talking about the, the five elements, but, you know, dancing, I mean, it's not necessarily breaking, but being part of the show, exactly. you know, being part of the, the whole, it's not even the entourage, but just part of the group, really. Just right. like the DJ, just like, I don't know, the, 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 um, the hype man or, you know. We That's were definitely it. part of Cool G Rap Show. We were so much a part of Cool G Rap Show that anyone that has ever seen us perform, you know, a lot of times, you know, back in those days, because I know we have a lot of younger, um, you know, listeners right now that's probably tapping in, and I appreciate that. Um, you have, like, uh, you have a rapper. A lot of times, even in these movies, when they, you know, kind of, like, paint that picture, you'll see a rapper yeah. in, the, in the forefront, and then you see dancers behind them. Right. It wasn't like that in the beginning. You know, you would have the rappers in the forefront and they would also, you know, dance along with their rap, with the with their right. dancers and right. everything. So it was all a group effort. Right, It's exactly. It's a whole choreographed uh, show. Um, exactly. Richie's saying dances made you feel and want to be part of the music. That's very true because for Absolutely. me, uh, listening to the music and me being not American, sometimes you don't, understand the lyrics especially not at, at a young age but you feel the music and you know how to move so <clears throat> dancing makes you part of the music even if you don't understand it exactly. um so that's a form that's of expression true. a form of expression yes. you know and um that's why i actually do the art because dancing is a form of art yes it's, it's, art, it's expressing Express, right. yeah any art is a, a is expressing your your feelings your emotions your whatever yeah Exactly. When Coogee Rap, you know, G Rap wasn't a dancer. And, you know, everybody knows Coogee Rap for, you know, the flow and everything. Yeah. So when we would rock with G, G will actually step to the side. And let y'all do get busy. And like, yo, check out my dances. And we would dance from the beginning of G Show to the <laughs> very end. Even if he did a freestyle, a lot of dancers would dance one or two songs and they take a break right. and let the rapper do what he does. We had a routine flow. Everything. So you were fit. Every, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I have to get back to that. I have to get back <laughs> well, to that. <laughs> what people don't understand is that artists nowadays, whether they dance or not, performing is, you know, exercise. You have to be able to have breath control when you're on the mic. Oh. And then you have to have, um, how do you say that, um, uh, stamina. Because 
You have to, if you do a show, 45, 50 minutes, hour, hour and a half, you have to be able to do that without taking breaks. And, you know, you can incorporate breaks by giving the DJ or whoever their shine, but that's not always the case. So, yeah, if you're a dancer, then you have to be able to move. But, you know, talking about Cool G Rap not being a dancer, how was it uh, dancing with Big Daddy Kane? Now, yeah, that was different. A whole was, different uh, thing. A whole different thing. And that's why, you know, it's so, I, I really feel blessed to have oh, yeah. rocked with both of those cats. And, and that great guy. Legendary. I mean, like, great guy. Just like, personal. when I tell you these guys are have you laughing from start to finish, these, <laughs> comic view, comic view, G-Rap, Kane, the whole team, the whole Juice crew, bananas. Right bananas but um dancing for big daddy kane was different see when we was rocking with g rap we was in our element already me and sean dope easy because you started with we throw, him too. we throw on our hoodies yeah you know, we got our tims on whatever you know we're in our street gear we we rocking we're in our element kane uh -uh -uh. grown and sexy <laughs> Totally different. The switch up on them. Bomb. Right. We got the suits. I started shopping at Gibbs. All these expensive spots. It was even a whole Stacey, different ball game. I didn't know what Stacey Adams was until I met Kane. <laughs> <laughs> Can you dance in them suckers? <laughs> Listen, we, we found a way to make it happen. Right. Remember, Have you on your feet. <laughs> yeah, I remember when we, we, we traveled on, I think, on your side of town. And uh, we was out there. We, we, we did so many things i had i had bought some oh uh, i'm getting i'm getting my timeline a little mixed up hold on i don't want to jump into that yet uh, i'll go there i'll get my timeline it's a little bit mixed up but we came on the public enemy tour mm -hmm. bananas it was a whole different thing and having kane out there dancing with us right the crowd would go bananas i mean like big daddy kane was i don't even know how to compare him to the to artists that's out really right now like yeah that's not was the, that's, the yeah. biggest thing out i mean he yeah. would be compared to I guess if you're young and you're out there, I mean, how you would possibly see a Jay Z or a or a uh, I don't want to say Drake, but like I'm, I, but I'm not still, talking about rap style. I'm just talking about the yeah. level of how long. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but even that you. is even that is not comparable. I don't even think that that's really. That. I think it's even larger than that. It was. A it's different. different. It was different time, and it was a whole. He came with a whole different type of energy and, and style, vibe. and yeah. And 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 I wish I wish I had seen him because you know what I you know I've I've met a whole bunch of people interviewed a whole bunch of people been to a lot of shows. Yes. Cool G Rap, Big Daddy Kane, the two people that I've never seen perform and I've never had a chance to sit down with. And not so much Cool G Rap, no offense, he's great, but Big Daddy Kane has always been on top of my bucket list to talk to. But every time he was here, because he's been here a lot, I was out the country, I was traveling. Wow. So I missed him so many times, and we now need to I'm just make like, that happen. We need to make that happen. I'm going to highlight my brother. We need I'm going to speak this happen. into existence. There we if go. anybody we can here. hook me up. <laughs> there was another person I interviewed that said they would hook me up with him. They happen. I don't, I'm not chasing people, but hey, if you ever get a chance to connect me and have him on, you know, or whatever, maybe at some point when we're traveling, I'd be forever grateful because that, <laughs> that's a person that I would love to sit down with. Amazing brother. Amazing brother. It's taught me so much. I mean, with the business, outside of the business, both of them are big brothers and mentors to this day. You yeah. know, a lot of, uh, even with my art, you know, when I have the, the privilege of, of, of speaking to these guys or, you know, because everybody's very busy and doing their thing. But when I do speak to them, they give me their time, we yeah. all over in. It's just like if it, if it never left, it's just like it's 89. Right. No, that's, and that's how it's supposed to be, really. That's how it's supposed to be. Um, Okay, thank you for sharing the stories. Let's get into some of my questions. And I see that uh, people have questions in the comments. Please feel free to put them in the, in the question box so I can get to them later. We don't see everything that's being put in here. Nope, I see you, sis. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, what's um, up, Nope. <laughs> what are, what is, because this is the question you were referring to earlier. What is some of the, or what are some of the mistakes that you made in this industry? Because this is a crazy industry. We all know it's, you know, a doggy dog world. Um, what are some of the mistakes that you made that turned out to be your biggest lessons and that you want to give out to people? Hmm. I was talking specifically about the hip hop industry and how you've moved in there. Well, I don't really look at anything as an actual mistake. It's all a learning lesson for me. That's um, why we call it a lesson, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
one that stands out more than anything like a sore thumb actually is uh it was after our first uh commercial that we we did we did a we did a pepsi commercial you know shout out to fat five freddy we did that with uh Ooh, M I met him. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that's my guy salute he's an awesome artist as well let me just put that out there yes i don't know you know what i mean and connected to one of my favorite artists too um basquiat so that that's like Ooh. awesome you know what i mean but um we uh we did that commercial with him um my regret would be later on down the line i should have been a part of a, a union that was called mm -hmm. sag at that time and the sag union is for you know uh actors and, and actresses yeah, SAG and after right that. now yeah exactly and at that time i was supposed to pay into my dues there was a lot of things going on i was very young in the game and i just felt like you know what this time's gonna last forever and we was doing what we do uh, I'm not going to think about, I don't want to be an actor. But then you start to look at people like the Will Smiths and, and right. everybody else down the line. And I, I sat back, like, as I got older, and, you know, you advance and you level up over yeah. the years, I look back and I go, damn, I wish I would have pursued that. You know, shout out to my boy, uh, Fredro Starr, with everything he's doing. You know, oh, yeah. I um, it's something that I, that I always wanted to get into. So what I decided to do, is um, a lot of my projects that I'm working on now, some I can speak on, some I cannot. Um, you know, um, I'm getting my little uh, Kenzel Washington on. <laughs> <laughs> Kenzel Washington. And you know what? In these type of industries, it's never too late to do anything. I mean, acting doesn't have age limits. They need actors of any age. So it's something that you can still tap into. And most creative people have more than one talent. They just don't tap into it. So I encourage you, to do that and uh since i'm dabbing in the film and tv world right now hey if any any projects come up that you know i see you fit for it then definitely we yeah. need to talk i mean this this you know off the air i want to talk to you about a few things i see a couple of things that you're doing out there that i know for a fact would be like awesome to be a part of you know right. you know the team and the connection and the networking um so that's oh, yeah we got point. each other now so you already we'll, know we'll work that out we'll work that out that's what um, I love about this pandemic. It brought me to a lot of people, a lot of great yes. people. Like our whole team on Clubhouse, I love all those guys. I mean, like you guys keep me laughing early in the morning. <laughs> if I if I can't get on, I'm a little upset in the mornings. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah. You got FOMO. You, going. <laughs> you got a little FOMO if you can't get with us. <laughs> No, but it's all good, you know, and, and that's the thing that I did with this even before Clubhouse. I started this a year ago. And um, shout out to Keon. He was one of my first guests. Mm. Um, it, it really connected not just me with other people and, and expanded my network. It also expanded people's networks who are tuning in because I see people and I'm like, oh, these are the people you need to connect with. Or this, you know, I'm shouting out people that have certain talents and tap yeah. in with each other. So that's definitely <clears throat> this whole live series that I have is, has also been a blessing to me because I really just started from you know from my heart like feeling like everybody's down and depressed because the creative industry shut down let me just see if I can uplift people for an hour and it just grew out to be this and I can't I, you know I'm happy well that's and I'm happy awesome. I still have guests like you that want to inspire well absolutely and you know that's really what it's all about I've learned um it's no longer about me you know um spiritually it's it's more about what I can give to others. You know what I mean? And, oh, yeah. And that's where I get my satisfaction, whether it be the art, whether it be um, some, some videography work that I'm, that I'm doing or, or whatever the case is. As long as I can touch someone and inspire them, yeah. then I've done my job, even if it's one person. And that's, and that's what I say. Like, I may not have a lot of viewers, but if I touch one person with my conversations – my job is done. And, and I truly believe that God put me on this earth to be in service of others. So everything I do in my job is serving others, helping others live their dream um, and, and facilitating things to, you know, have people happy in this world and help them. And that's, that's all I've been doing for, for the past 20 something years. So and I, I, I'm happy when other people are happy. There I want to see go. everybody win. And it sounds so I guess fake, but if you really know me, people that know me know that that's true because I've been doing this. Yeah, I'm I don't get paid for this. I'm it still struggling. <laughs> it doesn't sound fake at all. Real recognize real, and um, 
you know, uh, when you when you work from your heart, right, really coming from a, a genuine place, nothing can stop. Can't go wrong. No, go wrong. this is God's plan. I'm cool. You know, as yeah. much as I don't make money off of this, God's got me. So I'm, you know, exactly. I'm good. <laughs> exactly. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Let's get back to you, because um, I'm looking at the time. Uh, what are what are some of the memorable moments that you've had in your career so far? Um, Public Enemy Tour with Big Daddy Kane, definitely a memorable moment. Um, shout out to the Bomb Squad, <laughs> with the Brave yes. Noise Tour. Um, wow, being out there with Chuck D. Uh, I love Chuck. He's the best. Chuck, he's the best. Listen, my oh man, Flavor Flav, um, Terminator X, um, Stessa Sonic, you know, Daddy O, um, EPMD, Eric Paris, that's family. Uh, wow. I hope I'm not even forgetting anybody, but listen, that tour for me at that age, 15, yeah. 16 was like amazing. Like a lot of places I wasn't even able to get into, like the after parties <laughs> and stuff like that, but they would have to vouch for me. We gotta make sure he's not drinking. We gotta... I was that, that young right. guy getting through the doors, like, yo, he's a celebrity. So, you know, I'm getting through and I'm, <laughs> I'm seeing things like- Where's your ID? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's, you know what, that's actually really dope because if you were already on tour with these big cats and you're not even legal of age to be in these clubs, that says a lot about your talent at a young age. It was, it was amazing. You know, the, you know, it's not about the money, but you know, the, the amount Experience. of money, yeah, the, the, the money that we were making at that time, a lot of, you know, families would work hard two weeks and, and weren't right. really even bringing in. So, you know, at that time we didn't, well, me, I can talk for my speak for myself. Yeah, yeah. You know, Sean was much older than me. I don't think that I really valued the dollar the way that we need to because I'm just spurred by this through that, you know. And you know, you 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 go through those points in life, and then you say, "Damn, if I would have." That's had what the everybody mind I have does. Now, then. That's what everybody does at a young age, especially in this industry. When when your first paycheck comes in, your first success, you're like, you see that they splurging on cars and whatnot, and then boom, when's the next paycheck coming in? This is why we need to talk to people that can manage your finances. Shout out to Kyle, who was in here, who's a uh, wealth manager for, you know, sports and entertainment folks. Yeah, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I just pl see plug, plug in the people. Plug, if, anybody plug. Needs, <laughs> if anybody needs help managing their wealth, uh, I don't have any currently, but I'm <laughs> going to get there. So I'm going to have to meet Kyle. So uh shoot him a message his name is uh, well. kkc30 on here kkc30 yes mm -hmm. um okay i'm looking at the time uh shout out to my dude edward here we're still keeping you in prayers he's fighting a disease and we, we you know we're, we're, we're keeping your prayers um what was i saying oh yeah so who are some of your inspirations at the time quickly okay we have uh muhammad ali from mm -hmm. kid definitely um James Brown, the Nicholas Brothers, uh, Bruce Lee, uh, Bruce Lee for his philosophies. Um, I love Bruce Lee. I'll, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll keep it right there. All right, cool. And, and those are excellent names to be inspirations to anybody. I think you're not the only one looking up to those people and trying to uh, uh, max out your life and your potential. Um, I know that we talk mostly about your history as a dancer but you're moving in art at the moment, like graphic yes. design. So right. what is, because you know, you said your art is influenced by your, uh, by hip hop culture and your experiences. Can you mention like a solid example of that? Um, uh, or how, or how does it, how, how does the influence of that come out in your art? Maybe that's a better question. Uh, well, I don't think you guys, well, you see Biggie back there. Um, we got Biggie over here. Yeah. I mean, he influenced a lot of people. And then we got, of course, on this side, we got Pop. Yeah. That piece right there. Um, and a quick story with uh, Tupac, when we was on the road with Big Daddy Kane, um, I think we was on the West Coast, and um, we had the opportunity to actually meet Pop, you know, very early mm -hmm. in the game. And that was um, when Tupac was dancing for Digital Underground. You know, digital underground awesome. with humpy dance. That was really yeah. a dope time. And um, Pop actually came to Sean and myself and was like, yo, y'all guys are real dope. You know, why don't you teach me how to dance? You know, we laughed at it like, really? come on, man. Like, come on, like, laughed or whatever. He laughed too, but Pop was that serious. And it's crazy to me because when you really look at it, 
you know, we influenced Tupac at that time in the early stage and later on in life, he influenced the whole world, me included. Yeah. So yes. with the shows, you never know who you can influence. So that's my yes. small story with that. So that's things like that, you know, I put out yes. there because if it can influence me, maybe I can influence someone else by actually designing yes. it in my, in my own way. So I would put a different flip to it. This piece right here, I actually call it Ambitions of a G. So if you can see it right <laughs> nice. there, you know, what I'm saying? Nice. it's a thousand it's dollar bill right there. And over here, when you got Biggie, you already know with uh, DJ Mr. C and, and our whole connection yes. right there, that's more money, more problems. <laughs> that's awesome. I love yes. it. I love it. Um, I know you had a premiere. Yes. Are you, did you have anything prepared to put it in here or um, to show it? What I'm going to do is, is right after the interview, I'm gonna. You're gonna put it up. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna put up a, a work for me, but I'm gonna send it to you, Peg, because I, I got it in the format for for this platform. I'm gonna send it to you like that. Um, I'm gonna also blast it up too, so you guys can go on my page. But I, yeah, I can't. I can't put it up because okay. this one has to go up right after. But it's okay because okay, what we're plugging right now is the world premiere of I'm of my new product. For my brand. Yes. I have a brand as well. It's called Fire. And FIRE stands for Forever I'm Young Apparel, you know, and I came together with that, that term to actually bridge the gap between the young generation yeah. and my generation, okay? And um, I want to say shout out to my brother that I partnered with, you know, he has Serenix Inc., and that's my brother Troy, you know, and I got my, my company, my, my film company, FIRE Shots. It's Fire Shots. definitely a world premiere, and it's a trailer. You guys are going to love it in the product off the chain. Trust yes, you can, you don't this miss trailer it. is dope as hell. I've seen it, even though I missed a couple of things <laughs> in <laughs> my blind ass. Uh, no, it's really dope. Please watch it. Uh, make sure you shoot over to Kenny's Instagram and his, his platforms, his socials, to find the, the, the dope ass trailer for this product. So, yeah. yeah. Like, let, me, let me tell him, you know, the, the um, Instagram is Kenny underscore conglomerate. Conglomerate spelled K E N. G L O M E R A T E. You can go there and check it out. Um, you can also pre order the product once you see it. Um, yes. And that's on the website, which is fireapparel.com. And that's fire being spelled F I Y A apparel.com. Um, yes. uh, also, before we go, I wanted to tell everybody make sure you tuck in your chains and lock your doors because on April 9th, the Slam Boys is coming back with it. The LP is crazy. I've been zoning out, creating a lot of hot material. Yes. Shout out to Sticky Fingers I saw and my it. boy Fredro Star, Onyx for Life. I also want to shout out my LB fam. Shout out to We're the not Lost done Boys. yet. Listen. <laughs> I'm not done with this interview yet. You you shouting people out as if we're leaving. I'm I still oh, I got questions. Want, I just don't want to forget. I don't want to forget. <laughs> no, you don't no, you can shout it out. Shout out everybody to see you what to it shout is. out. Y'all see what it is. Yep, Onyx. Onyx for life. to the boys, because, you know, I have Fredro on here. For those who missed the interview, please oh, check out my IGTV. House. <laughs> yes. Um, and for anybody who missed any of my interviews, my whole IGTV is full of them. Pick and choose, you know. And um, it's all inspiring. It's all motivating. Um, I wanted to ask you two more questions. And there's one question from somebody in here. Um, oh, Nature asks... Was Road to the Riches the first video TCF appeared in? No, no. Oh, it was not. What was the um, first video? The first video that I've ever done, actually, I was in a crowd scene, and it was actually Raw, Big Daddy Kane. Oh, yes. he's, I think you said that in the, in in the room house, one I think, day. Yeah, yeah. One of the rooms. yeah, that was actually my first video. Because I'm like looking through the video. You know my blind ass. I can't find you. <laughs> Young Kenny, I, I won't see it. You're going to have to point out which one you were at what minute. <laughs> yeah, that was that was definitely a, a moment for us. You know what I mean? And I'm um, getting a shout out on uh, Mr. C's record. That was dope, too, at that time for being the dancer and having your name mentioned. That was a big thing back right. then. So, you know, Juice Crew always showed a lot of love. Salute. That's awesome. Um, current and future projects what do you have in the works right now well you just shouted shouted out your product and your um your brand yeah I'm let working me ask on a, you i'm okay. sorry go ahead i was just gonna say i'm working on a, a creative documentary 
Um, oh, awesome. That'll be coming. That's really, really dope and, and, and different. Um, once you see the trailer, you'll know the level of, of where I'm going with that. Um, I also have a piece. I, I did an art piece. I don't know. I'll probably post it up later. Um, I did a piece with Kobe. Well, the Kobe piece is coming. I, I'm doing it on a new, a new medium. And okay. I call that piece um, King's Disciple. So look out for that. That's something I'm working on, and that's going to be something that's real dope. Um, and I, I think that it's time now for me to release that piece. When Kobe first passed, it was a lot of people doing uh, Kobe pieces. I just didn't want to jump right, in right. And, 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 and do it at that, at that particular time. No disrespect to, to anyone that, that, that did. Um, respectfully, as my right. boy Jimmy would say. You know what I mean? But um, I think for me personally, now was the time that I'm ready to put that out. And um, I think a right. lot of you guys are going to love that. All right. Awesome. Um, I know that you're not necessarily dancing anymore, but you're in art now. But if you can speak this into existence with me, who would you still want to work with in any type of industry, in any type of craft of yours? Wow. Uh, <laughs> That, that's a big question for me. Uh, you well, should I, know that I'm asking this. You could have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? There's just so many people that I, I just. Name a few. Okay. Going down the list. Bust the rhymes. Bust the In bust. what way? Um, Art? artistic, artistically, uh, because I, I, I'm getting into the, with the film and everything as a creative director. I, I think that collaborating with Bust would be very interesting. Um, Missy Elliott is another one. Uh, I, Ooh, I just, yes. I just like their. I like their 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 vibe and their, their style when it comes down to that. Um, of course, my brother Fredro, you know, one one acting tip. Uh, yeah. Wow! 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 A lot you, of you, you, you hit me in the gut. Um, on on a business tip, um, DJ Scratch. I just I just love the way that he uh, oh, wow. he uh, he he handles his his, his business brand. sense. Yes, yeah. I, I would love to just you know be in in a in a board meeting and, 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 and learn. Um, my brother, Kid Capri. Oh, yeah. Uh, another one. Um, you said this name a few. My boy, DJ Diamond, the artist, you know, but we got some things in the work, so you guys will see that. That's already, I'm bringing that to fruition. Right. Salute yeah, yeah, yeah. We're speaking this into existence, and if any of those oh, collaborations wow. come to come to life, I, I need credits, I need shout-outs. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I got one. I definitely. Wait, what's happening? What's happening? Three minutes before, I don't know what's happening. Can can people see me? Can we still see Kenny? I mean, let me know in the comments. Am I freezing? Is he freezing? What's going on, people? Kenny, come back. We were just almost finished. Why does this always have to happen? Like, you think you can get like smooth sailing, and nothing is happening. So, okay, he left. Okay, let's see if he's coming back. Um, here we go. Yes. Oh, th thanks for letting me know, guys. Okay, I'm back, what I'm happened? back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Yes. I'm back, I'm back. Listen. We almost made person, it. <laughs> that last person I wanted to mention. Yes. Listen, I know he's out there. This is my dude already. Listen, Eric Sherman. Eric okay. Sherman. Eric Sherman, and I'm putting that in existence. Listen, Eric Sherman with D Rugs. Let's. I, I I need to I need to collab something with you, brother. I'm putting that out. There. Well, I would love to do that. You you got you, your friends, right? You just I I know I know, but you know, you know when you when you're in the industry and you and you're moving around and you're juggling everything, you know, you know, boys, everybody's is is, is moving and doing a lot. But but if you have it, a solid if you have a solid plan, present it to him. I mean, I've been in love about stuff, and he's slow with getting back at me, but he <laughs> did it. It might Listen, take I've been, 10 I've been years. That, but that's my it boy. might take 10 years, but he'll get back to me about it. Uh, Listen, and he knows I talk I, shit about him, so. Listen, we're going to be here for, for, for 20,000 more years. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Art is, is infinite, you know? It's forever. Yes. Um, all right, last question of the day. Um, do you have a life advice or motto that you live by that you want to give out to the people? Okay, I'm going to hit you with two. One that my wife said to me, and um, it, it, it kind of like made me really ponder on it for a minute. And it's something that we always say. You hear a lot of people a lot of times say, uh, 
practice makes perfect. Yeah. Right. And and we was in a conversation, and I actually said that, and she said, um, she said, babe, actually that's not true. I said, well, what do you mean? She said, perfect practice makes perfect. And when that hit me, I'm like, whoa. You know, so it's not just practice that makes perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. So you can be working one thing and be doing it the wrong way. You're just making a bad habit out of it. That's so true. That was a, it made me, you know, it made me look at things a little bit different. So that stands out. And I would say to people, you know, when you're working at something, you have to really put that effort in. Like Bruce Lee said, if you practice one kick, um, like a hundred thousand times, let's just say for an example, that's mm -hmm. how you're going to master it. But if you, you know, do a hundred thousand different kicks, you're not really a master. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. So, so that stands yeah. out. And um, as I was med meditating this morning and doing my little workout, getting ready to just boot a belly and all that, I came up with something because I'm, <laughs> I'm writing a, I'm writing a few little quotes for myself. You know, when I'm inspired, and I would jot it down. So I, I give me a moment. I just gotta like read. I think I wrote down so I wouldn't forget it. I wanted to get it exactly. Mm -hmm. And I'll leave this with the people. Um, live within your confidence or die within your dreams. Yes. And um, yes. what I mean by that is, you know, when you live within your confidence, you know, your God-given gift, you know, TCF crew, the chosen few, when you live it's within your me. confidence, nothing can stop you. You know what I'm saying? You all the way up. <laughs> That's and that's sad. pretty much what I was saying earlier. If you live in your purpose as well, then then you can't go wrong. So kind of the same thing a little bit. But yeah, that's live it. in your confidence. And, 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 th and that's why it's very important to know your purpose. Because if you know your purpose, you automatically have the confidence because this is what you're meant to do. You don't yeah. have to worry about nobody else's opinions. This is your purpose. If you know your purpose, then, then you know how to live in confidence. Yes, that's a fact. That's definitely yeah. a fact. It doesn't matter what walk of life you, you're in. I mean, I, yeah. I meet people every day. More people inspire me that's not in the music business than, than people that actually are. But this, but this whole series is not necessarily to inspire creators. It's to inspire anybody with a dream. Exactly. Because every journey takes the same amount of passion and investing and, and confidence and practice, it doesn't matter what art or industry you're in. If you want to be the best mother or the best housewife, you still got to work at it. That's that doesn't right. come naturally. So, yes, thank you for these, these, uh, these gems, so to speak. And I want to just thank you for these wonderful stories, this, your journey, sharing a bit of your journey, because I know you've done 10,000 10, other things. But yeah, I appreciate you so much. I, I, I love the stories. I love the fact that you're such a, such a um, likable person. Like, <laughs> animated. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it, you know, part, part of being a creative, but also just, you know, having lived that life and having worked with those great people, you know, you still like Kenny, you know, and that's, that's awesome. I, I, you know, I really appreciate that. And thank you for wanting to be a guest and uh, being inspiring and motivating to us. Absolutely. And I would love to, to actually come back and, you know, see where I'm at next because I'm, I'm, I'm elevating every day. And, well, you know, the, you're number 90. So there's 90. 90 other, 89 before you that also want to come back and give updates. But we definitely revisit that, and I'm looking into uh, making a separate series uh, for other things that, you know, maybe you can get on there. We'll, we'll you know, I'll figure it out because I, I just have it. to, yeah, I have to just navigate my life and see where it all fits in. But th just thank you for being my 90th guest. And, um, Absolutely. yeah, thank you so much, and we'll be and in I, touch. I wanted to, yeah, before we go, I just wanted to also say, you know, in this industry, I know that it sometimes is, like, male-dominant, but I really want to salute all the women in this industry. I wanted to end by saying that because, you know, you guys work very hard and, and I recognize it. And I want to give you your flowers, Thank you know, you. while you guys are here. You know, I appreciate you know, that. Absolutely. I, I see what I, you're and doing I, out there. And, and that, doesn't, that doesn't go unnoticed. I do see the men that do support the women. And, and thank you for, for uh, actually emphasizing that. I appreciate that. Yes. And, um, Let's say our prayers for, you know what I'm saying, the dog, for X, yes. you know what I mean? Let's and for everybody else who's dealing with COVID or families. Right. Like my, my friend Edward was just in here. He's battling uh, 
terrible disease and um we didn't think he was going to pull through but he's you know he's still here and we're praying for him too and so there's a lot of people pray we definitely pray for DMX and and everybody else um you know still trying to trying to get out of whatever situation they're in um, yeah. Thank you again, and um, I have no X to click you out. So if you are, you know, willing to see yourself out, my life, <laughs> let me see. I hate let, me see. let me figure this out. I hate let asking people that, out. but yeah, <laughs> I can't kick people out my own life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, it's Ram was that about? Uh, there should be an X somewhere for you. Ah, there we go. I hate asking people to remove themselves. It's so it's rude, but. Uh, thanks for the the wonderful interview and the wonderful talk, Kenny. Uh, I love the stories. Thanks everyone for being part of this uh, talk. I appreciate everybody everybody that was tuned in. Um, I'm a little tired, so I'm going to take my butt straight to sleep after this. Uh, I'll be back on Monday with um, Mr. Avery Washington, an author, uh, definitely inspiring uh, family guy. And um, next Wednesday, I got Mr. Mike Hands, another rapper and, and entrepreneur so to speak so i got a lot of different people coming up and uh yeah stay tuned uh oh thanks sean everybody was awesome everybody in here all my friends nature daryl uh i see you sonia sean whoever was in here um everybody thank you so much and i'll see you guys uh next monday bye <laughs>